How's it going, everybody? It is a great Friday, and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to start everything off by giving a proper send-off to Nick Markakis. He is retiring from baseball. He spent the last 15 years playing with the Baltimore Orioles and the Atlanta Braves. He actually has some pretty cool stats, ranks eighth all-time on games played for a right fielder. Kind of interesting. And he finishes with 1,872 career hits. He definitely is a wonderful outfielder that had a really good long career, one that everyone should actually strive for. The other thing I want to bring up before we get to the video is the LA Dodgers have renewed their contract with Andrew Tolls. Andrew Tolls has been on the restricted list the last two years. He left the team with an undisclosed reason and then placed on the restricted list. Turns out he pretty much vanished from baseball, from his family, and he was suffering from some mental health issues. He was found trespassing behind a Key West airport last summer, was placed uh, under arrest and had a misdemeanor. The charges were dropped recently and he was the MLB only allows a two-year maximum for a player to stay on the restricted list. And that two years is now up. And he's been removed from the list. And the Dodgers re-signed his contract, giving him all the support he can get in terms of financial and medical insurance. And he's since the charges were dropped, he's seeing mental health professionals and working his way back to recovery. Just a classy move from a classy organization. And with that being said, let's get to the game. Welcome back to the Daily Baseball Report. Coach Matt coming at you with another video where we talk all things baseball and baseball news and we cover everything that we can in Major League Baseball. We are currently on the road to 1K by opening day, so please Click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos, and smash the like button because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. So a lot has happened today, an absolute ton. We're going to start off by showing some of my favorite things, which is obviously defense, and Javi Baez has it all. This guy is a platinum defender at shortstop. He is so good. He's still kind of figuring out his hands but he's still not figuring out his hands. He, does that make sense? He, he'll bobble the ball and then he'll make an awesome play and uh, showcased by, by this video here. He is just so good that he's so fast that he moves, he moves faster than the ball is and he'll move his hand and get into right on the, the heel of the glove and he'll pick it up and throw it. Just This guy's incredibly good defense. Jock Peterson went two for two again. He is just crushing the ball. He didn't hit any home runs today, but he's hitting 579 and his OPS is 2.11, which is just, it is outrageously good. It's obviously spring training, got to take it with a grain of salt, but it's cool to see this guy be as successful as he is. Speaking of the Chicago Cubs, Cubs fans, what in the world is going on with Craig Kimbrell? Like he pitched two outs. He got two, he, he pitched 0.2 innings. Gave up four more runs, and his ERA is 30.38. Zach Allen pitched 3.1 innings, had one walk, had four Ks, and a zero ERA. And Quintana pretty much matched it. He pitched three innings, had one walk, one K. His ERA is also 0.0. .0. Moving on over to the Rangers and White Sox, Giolito made another start with the White Sox. He pitched four innings, gave up two hits, one walk, he had five Ks, and his ERA is currently one. Moving on over to the Giants versus the Rockies, Kevin Gosman made a start for the Giants. He only pitched two innings. He gave up one hit and had one K and his ERA is 0.0. .0. So far, his signing has not been a bust. Elliot Ramos, again, had two more hits, another RBI, and he's currently hitting 450 with a 1.42 OPS. The question is about Elliot Ramos is, will he make the Major League Club or will service time manipulation come into play? He's only 21 years old. I foresee that the Giants may want 
another year or two of control of this person. So they may manipulate his start time. It's no, been known to happen across the league. Even if players are ready, I think it's completely bogus. They need to get these players up there so they can actually perform and a, have a really successful career and obviously help the teams that, that have them. Like those players, those, don't those teams want to put together the best product out there? Regardless, I might think a little bit differently. On the other side of the ball, Trevor Story did hit a home run. Elias Diaz went two for three and he hit a home run. Fernando Tatis Jr. made his comeback from the illness, not the, the illness, but his sickness today. And on the first pitch he saw, he hit it into the stands, another home run for this guy. He's so good. It, I wonder how many home runs he's gonna hit this year. What do, you th what do you guys think? In the comments below, tell me how many home runs do you think Tatis Jr. is going to hit this year? 25, 35, 45? In the comments below, let me know what you think. The Dodgers duked it out today. Chris Taylor had two hits. Austin Barnes hit a three run home run and Max Muncy broke out of his slump and he hit his first home run of the spring. Walker Bueller and David Price both pitched three innings. Bueller gave up two runs. He struck out four. The Marlins versus the Mets. Jesus Aguilar had two hits and one RBI. He is currently hitting 400 with a 1.167 OPS. And Pete Alonso for the Mets, he went one for two with a, with a RBI double. And he's currently hitting 333 with a 1.312 OPS. Marcus Stroman pitched for the Mets and he pitched 3.1 innings, gave up a run, had one walk, struck out four, and his ERA is currently 3.24. How do you Mets fans feel about Stroman? I still don't know how I feel about the guy. He says he feels good. He says he has command, yet he walked a guy and his ERA is 3.24. I just... It's early in the spring. I just, I don't know how I feel about it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. The Astros and Cardinals duped it out today. Adam Wainwright pitched for the Cardinals. He pitched four innings, gave up one hit, one walk, three Ks, and his ERA is currently one. Tyler O'Neill and Yadier Molina both had two hits and a home run. Robel Garcia and Ronnie Dawson hit home runs for the Astros. Jamison Tyon made his start for the Yankees today. He pitched 2.2 innings, gave up three walks, had four Ks, and his ERA is still zero. And Rob Brantley hit a home run for the Yankees. The Braves offense is finally starting to fire, yet Ozuna has struck out three times and didn't have a hit. And Freeman went 0 for 3, and he's still not hitting yet. So the hitting is coming from their on-the-cusp players, those who are fighting for a position on the Major League team. John Camargo, or Johan Camargo, hit a home run. Phillies and Orioles duked it out. Zach Wheeler pitched for the Phillies. He pitched four innings, gave up two runs. They were both earned. He gave up one walk. He had three Ks, and he lowered his ERA to 6.4. My boy, Mickey Janis, pitched one inning for the Baltimore Orioles. He had one walk and one K and he sports a zero ERA. All right, and one thing we have got to go over is there is going to be a major league baseball rule change. Well, it's gonna be in the minor leagues, but it is going to potentially affect the major leagues, okay? So there are a few interesting, there's gonna be a few interesting rule changes. I wanna know how you feel about these rule changes. So first things first, from AAA all the way down to the bottom level of the minor league system, the bases are going to get bigger. They are going to not be 15 by 15, 15 inches by 15 inches. They are going to be increased to 18 inches by 18 inches. And they're going to be made of a brand new material that is supposed to be a little bit less slick when it's wet outside. I'm okay with this. I think this is gonna increase the stolen base percentage because it's so close at certain times for a runner to be safe or out. I think it's gonna be huge for more conversions on stolen bases. It'll also decrease injury at first, second, or third on a bang bang play. I think this is a good move by baseball. I think increasing it by an inch and a half on either side, it's gonna be just fine. The next one from Double A, only in double A, they're going to not allow infielders to leave the infield, meaning they cannot be past the uh, the infield dirt. 
So they cannot be in the grass right behind their position, which means that they can't have that third baseman play like that shallow right field place for a left-hand hitter in the defensive shift. That's the first part. The second part is they will limit the amount of shifts that are allowed. They are going to limit the amount of pickoffs to the person at first base, and it's going to be limited to an at-bat itself. So if a runner is at first base and a left-hand pitcher wants to pick off to first base, they have to step off the rubber. That's also part of it. They, when they throw over, they have to step off the rubber, then throw over, and they only get two throwovers in one at-bat. I think that this is also trying to improve a stolen base success rate because if they throw over once, okay, he can only throw over one more. Throws over again as a runner, I'm thinking, hey, he can't pick off. I'm going to get a big, big, big lead. He can't pick me off now. Steal second base. <laughs> that's what I think. I mean, I was stealing bases all through high school and college. So that's my thought as a runner. I think that's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be like, if you guys watch hockey in overtime, they have three people on either side instead of five. And there's a lot of space and the game happens a lot faster because there's just more space. I think in baseball, there's going to be a lot more running and it's going to be cool to see someone steal 75 bags again. In very low A, they're going to implement a 15 second play clock. 15 seconds. Now, in baseball, that is like a snap of a finger. Baseball is a game that is supposed to be done kind of a little bit at your leisure, but they're going to in implement the 15 second so pseudo shot clock or pitch clock, so to speak. I don't know how I feel about that one. Also in low A, they're going to implement a robotic umpiring system for balls and strikes. I don't know how I feel about that. Now, I do think that's good because Angel Hernandez will maybe eventually not have a job, but I do think that there will be a umpire that needs to be there to make sure that everything works appropriately behind the plate, especially at the beginning. Or maybe they have like an umpire who's like a, a proctor or something or other and they should still have umpires out on the field for your base plays, et cetera. What do you guys think of these rules? These are all the rule changes that have been submitted and will be done this season in the minor leagues, which is gonna be interesting and fun and a different play on games. There's been a lot of rule changes over the years and I'm kind of a fan of it. I think that the shifts, the limited shifts is a good thing for baseball because if a hitter is hits to an area pretty often yeah you can kind of do a little bit of shifting but if you're letting the hitter hit it or you're pitching the ball in a position where the hitter is able to hit the ball then maybe you just didn't make your pitch or you did make your pitch and the hitter put a good swing in the bat and put the ball in play so you got to tip your cap there's times you just got to tip your cap and it's time for the hat reference of the day now, those of you in Southern California may recognize this hat. This is Servite High School. I was a baseball coach 2010. It was 2010, 2011. You know, I can't remember the exact year. Regardless, it was my first coaching experience after my baseball career ended. And I had a blast. It was a great time. I got to help coach the freshman team. I was an assistant coach. I helped with hitting and outfield and base running, those are typically the, the drills that I kind of managed. It was an absolutely great time. I was under coach Dave Lawn. I, he's definitely not at Servite anymore. I think he's at Jay Sarah, if I recall. If y'all don't know, for those of my viewers who aren't from Orange County or LA, the Trinity Baseball League is one of the best baseball leagues in the country. I think they consistently pump out talent that gets drafted straight out of high school. Others go to the division one schools and some high level division twos. For the most part, you don't see any of uh, the players that go to these schools, go to a division three or NAIA more likely because it, these schools is a, a it, it's recruiting is involved. You, it's a private school. So it costs, you know, between 35 and 55,000 a year, almost always get, get, pushed to a big time school. So it was it was a blast. I had a great time. I only did the one season and that's when I eventually moved into strength and conditioning. Anyways, there's your hat reference for the day. All right, well that does it for today's video. Remember, Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna go live 
It'll be my first live. I'm super excited, a little bit nervous, but I'm super excited about it. So please join me on that. So please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So that way you get notifications that the live will be coming up. And of course, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And with all of that, we will see you tomorrow.